Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. The coronavirus hits a little closer to home. Waverly Seniors Village is in the news again, and the Chilliwack Flight Fest is flying at a very low altitude. Thanks for watching. We are committed to providing local news and news that impacts our local audience from Harrison to Garrison, Greendale to Hope, and everywhere in between, including Agassiz, Rosedale, Squiala First Nation, Fairfield Island, Ryder Lake, Cheacton First Nation, Yarrow, and downtown Chilliwack. Our very special guest this week, Mayor Ken Popoff in this month's Councilor's Corner, Chilliwack City. And Katie McKay with What's on Chilliwack for March. And seated to my left, Jenny Clough, the President of Shape Your World Society and the Director of the Total Makeover Challenge. And welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. World markets are in free fall this week as the number of coronavirus cases, or COVID-19 as it's officially named, grows to an increasing number of countries around the world, with particular hotspots in South Korea, Italy and Iran, in addition to China. As you're no doubt aware already, the virus has its origins in the region around Wuhan, China, and was first recognized as a concern on New Year's Eve in 2019. Since that time, the number of cases has exploded to over 82,000 worldwide, with just under 3,000 reported deaths, most of those coming from China. In 80% of the cases, the outcome is mild to moderate. But in 20% of the cases, there is a severe respiratory reaction, with about 2-3% to resulting in a fatal outcome. While more people die worldwide of the flu every year, the big concern is that the death rate is significantly higher with COVID-19 than with the seasonal flu. This has led to some panic and shortages of items such as the N95 rated respiratory masks and hand sanitizer. Now in Chilliwack, in Chilliwack, all major hardware stores are currently sold out of masks. Chill TV learned this through a leaked internal memo from an undisclosed source at Home Hardware that new masks are not expected back in stock until at least July of this year. We did locate a few of those masks still available at Mark's on Luckacuck. With this backdrop, we are announcing a seventh case of COVID-19 in BC. The newly afflicted inv individual was close contact with the previously reported sixth case announced on February 20th. Both remain in isolation at home. And with that joint statement, Adrian Dix, Minister of Health, and Dr. Bonnie Henry, BC's Provincial Health Officer, confirmed the sixth and seventh BC cases of the virus. The Chilliwack School District circulated a letter from Fraser Health to parents this week where they reminded everyone to follow proper respiratory hygiene etiquette during the cold and flu season, including proper hand washing for at least 20 seconds using soap and water, alcohol-based hand rubs to clean hands if they are not visibly soiled, and do not touch your face, eyes, mouth with unwashed hands, Cover your mouth and nose when you sneeze or cough with a disposable tissue or crease of your elbow. And stay at home when you're sick. We'll keep you updated on this quickly evolving story. High-risk sex offender James Conway is back in court. Two years ago, residents in the eastern hillsides tried to have him removed from the community. He was sponsored, spotted walking around with his ankle bracelet and locals were not amused. And that included the now former mayor, Sharon Gates. Between 2016 and 2017, the convicted offender was moved from Mission to Abbotsford to Chilliwack. His history includes sexual interference with a number of teens. Conway was back in a Chilliwack court on Tuesday charged with a sexual offense involving a 16-year-old from January the 2nd. Court documents state he will be back in Chilliwack court March 17th. The Waverly Seniors Village on Young Road is back on the news for all the wrong reasons. The facility is operated by West Coast Seniors Housing Management. After the latest review in December of last year's, Fraser Health has deemed it a high-risk facility. Everything from poor care, no overnight care, staff shortages, and weak programming. There are reports that since new ownership took charge in 2017, there has been serious challenge to find caregivers who want to work there. The CEO of West Coast Seniors has been quoted saying they have over 30 years experience in the industry. That unfortunately doesn't explain the drop in level of care, staff morale, and the need for constant surveillance by Fraser Health. The Chilliwack Flight Fest Society took to their Facebook page to put out a dire plea for active volunteers and sponsors. The show did not go on in 2017, and the next two years were a challenge. The bottom line is that the fest is in dire straits. A 2020 show is in trouble. Organizers claim the apathy from all sectors may ground the flight fest forever. 
Volunteer organization meeting is set for March the 11th, and after that, if interest and sponsorship is not enough, the show will come to a final end. In 2019, Mother Nature showed her fury and power with a slide, blocking the path for fish stocks on the Fraser River at Big Bar. Panic set in as a mammoth effort started, trying to physically move spawning salmon around the slide area. First Nations and recreational fishermen demanded serious action. Blasting seemed to be the only clear way of fixing the problem. Last week, the DFO started the control blast to create a path for fish stocks. Dean Work, president of the Fraser Valley Salmon Society, and owner-operator of the Great River Fishing Ad Ventures in Chilliwack told Chill TV that they receive weekly updates from the DFO. So far, they are pleased with the progress. He went on to say, our newly formed Fraser River Collaborative Table is made up of First Nations commercial and recreational representatives and has been meeting for over a year now. This group is independent from the government presence at this time. They know we are monitoring. Nasi goreng is an Indonesian fried rice dish. It's an original recipe that has been handed down from Doubtson that we at Hofsteads have been using for 20 years. It is mildly spicy with hints of curry. Come in and enjoy it on Thursdays in our cafe as well as in our takeout section every day. Please come and enjoy. Last week, Chilliwack City Council publicly floated an idea to direct staff to consult the Downtown Business Association and properties on Victoria Avenue about a proposal to convert Victoria Avenue between Young Road and Nowell Street from a two-way traffic to one-way traffic and converting parking stalls on the south side from parallel to angle parking. It all looks good on paper until you look at the possible impacts. While the angle parking would echo what is found on Mill Street, the BIA and the city will have to take into account the impact on local businesses and on one nonprofit society, that being the Chilliwack Alano Club, and the other being the recovery house that is next to the Alano. Local consulting with neighbors will be starting in the next few weeks. Council also went back to the long-standing plea for backyard chicken coops within city limits. A temporary use permit was granted for a Yale Road property in what council agreed was uncharted territory. Obviously, concerns about smell and noise were brought up. Irene Croquette, the founder of Support Backyard Chickens in Chilliwack, was pleased with the permit and hopefully urban hens will be able to stay within city limits. Finally, Chilliwack City Council awarded the contract for the fabrication and installation of the Vedder Roundabout artwork. The piece was assigned by Squiala First Nation Chief David Jimmy and Bonnie Graham, Coast Salish artists, in consultation with the Stolo Nation Chiefs Council and Chilquaak Tribe. The cost of the artwork is pegged at 250000 And now, this month's edition of Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City with Barris Carden and featuring Mayor Ken Popoff. Welcome to another edition of Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City. And we have as our guest this week, Mayor Ken Popoff. Good to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here. Uh, what we're all about with uh, <coughs> Chilliwack uh, uh, Councillor's Corner is uh, educating uh, Chilliwack residents on what the city does. And so it's great to have you on our second episode. And how have you been? I've been great. And I would like to start with uh, it's Happy Pink Shirt Day. And I want everybody to be kind. I didn't get the it's, memo. It's I'll go cool home and to change. Be kind, so I'm wearing yeah. uh, what's this, chartreuse I want to say that. burgundy. It's like dark pink. And it shouldn't just be today. It should be every day. You're right. Okay. You're right. Things are going great, though, so yeah, sorry I digress there, but just I just wanted to throw that in. Well, welcome to the show, yeah, and yeah. I'm glad you did put that in. Um, so we have a few questions. There's been some okay. interesting uh, things that you guys have been working on. Uh, let's start with transportation. Uh, our transportation infrastructure seems to be going uh, for a big makeover in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. We've got some widening of some major uh, Chilliwack thoroughfares. There's um, Promontory Road, Prest Road. Uh, and Vetter Road. Correct. Can you sort of describe what's happening in these areas or what will be happening, what the cost is and how long it's going to take and you know what is residents we can expect to see? Sure. Um, I'm going to start with I'm sorry. 
Uh, no there's going to be some. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be some detours. There's going to be some some road closures. There's going to be, uh, you know, some issues that our drivers are going to be facing because we are working on three major infrastructure projects, as you listed off. Um, the total cost of the RFP was about 15 million bucks. Wow. And that doesn't uh, take into consideration the five million that we are going to be doing in road rehab as we do every year but back to the the original question um yeah promontory road from vetter to chillock river road is going to be five lanes uh that's already uh begun if motors have actually noticed that we are waiting for bc hydro on all our projects to move their poles on on that section of road and on pressed road um the Biggest project is going to be from from Watson to Keith Wilson because we are going to be, be actually burying those wires, so they'll be underground. Wow! We got one chance to do this. It's a couple million bucks extra, but we figured it, you know it's worth doing. No, that's aesthetically. good aesthetically and um, through major windstorms and that sort of thing for people losing power. Well, we probably really, save more that. space then too. Well, uh, correct, yeah, yeah, because there's not a lot of room there. It is tight there, yeah. Is it, gonna be two, is it two lanes each way then on, on that? It's actually five lanes. Is, is, is it down to the roundabout? To the roundabout, no, we're talking uh, oh, on press Watson to Keith Wilson. Okay. Okay, Watson to Keith Wilson is going to be, uh, uh, you know, five lanes, sidewalks, bicycle paths with the wires buried at that location. Okay, perfect. Promontory Road, uh, the poles are just going to be moved as well as Press Road. They're mm -hmm. going to be moved over. And, and, it's, uh, and what happens in a situation like that? Like, is that city land that's being, uh, uh, where you're doing that? Or, or you have to expropriate or do you buy the land from uh, le uh, farmers the, there? Or? The Vetter Road chunk uh, is, or actually has been expropriated. Uh, um, you know, and that was about a two year process to get through all those because there's, there, there's a lot of pieces of property that we needed to acquire. Uh, uh, Promontory Road, the same thing. We actually bought the chunk of property uh, to the north side to enable us to expand that road. And in that project as well, uh, that that 90 degree corner that's at uh, Veteran, I can Watson. The same uh, lady who owned actually both chunks. We are going to be softening mm -hmm. that that corner as well. So is, is that an easy process? Like, uh, do you find Nothing's any pushback? Easy about the, oh, well, pushback push, from some of the owners or? Uh, we, some complied and some have to go through the expropriation process. Okay, so gotcha. it, it was about a 50-50 mix. Yeah. It's, it's great in the long run. I know it's, it's oh, painful absolutely. in the short run, but yeah, uh, in absolutely. the long run, that, that, uh, that, that uh, section definitely needs it. Um, yeah. So another, uh, perhaps uh, even more high profile um, infrastructure upgrade is the downtown upgrade, specifically Five Corners. I understand that's due to be completed in May 2020. Is that right? I mean, that soon? That's an exciting project that I've been involved with for probably 15 years, or actually talked about it for that length of time. Yeah, there, there. We had a, a short sleeve with the Alga Brothers, and 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 they're still on 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 schedule. They're hoping for a May opening. Uh, we are doing a little bit of road work for, from Princess to Yale on that little stretched we want to have that done prior to their opening but if people are downtown and and you know look to the right and see what's going on the the 62 unit uh, um, apartment building is now three or four floors up and and it's going to continue on no that's an exciting project uh, uh, is that all on 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 budget and on time uh, I can't speak into budget because we sold it to the Elgar brothers mm -hmm. but uh, as, as far as I know yes it's on time Okay, good yeah, stuff. Yeah. All right. And uh, you've indicated changes um, to the ALC are forthcoming, including loosening of residential rules. Uh, um, how did that come about? Uh, what does it exactly mean? What's, what exactly is happening? Uh, and when can we expect to see changes, if, if you know that? Well, the government works very slowly, which we all know. Um, the concern... Provincial from, government. Yeah, City correct. government is We're lightning right fast. On, yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay. Get her done, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, 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 it came about where, um, you know, some homesteads that, that these folks wanted to rebuild, you know, like a new house on their property, but they weren't allowed to do that, to have a secondary suite or a secondary home on their property. So this is going to allow them to, to build a new house, stay in the old house, uh, you know, as a new one is being built. It, it, it could be for personal reference or, uh, you know, like a residence, or it could be for farm workers that actually work on the property. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, 
it'll be a process. Um, we did shoot some letters to the, you know, to the minister, and, and uh, I'm sure we, we weren't the only community to, to raise the, the question, and, and they've listened. So now it's just going to be a matter of time to see what they're going to come up with and, and for us to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll, it'll happen in a little bit of time is what I'm hearing. Exactly. We don't know yet. Um, no time frame. Some, something that um, we uh, is just in the news now, and it was our top news story today. We thought uh, maybe we'd uh, get uh, some uh, thoughts from the city on this, which is the the COVID nineteen or coronavirus, as it may be more more commonly known. Mm -hmm. um, is the city prepared, or what is the city uh, doing about that? We do have an emergency plan. Uh, in place for all emergencies, uh, anywhere from earthquakes to major fires to floods and this sort of thing, and this would fit into the health side of that plan. Uh, although for us, it's 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 working with Fraser Health, and and you know if they need extra space to to put, you know, if we have a major outbreak and they may need a building, we may have to take the Evergreen Hall and turn it into a triage, if you will, mm -hmm. or we may have to. Sh shut things down but mm -hmm. it's all you know it's a higher level uh we're not uh, suggesting that's what's going to happen no, no but we, we are prepared yeah. and, and it's good to ask the question but no we are prepared and but and it, it's in place it's interesting because uh, we reported um uh, today that um uh you know if, if you try to go into any hardware store in in chilliwack you, you can't uh, get the n95 masks uh they're sold out so if you're if you're wanting to do uh, insulation in your basement or some drywall, you can't get a mask. Okay. Uh, and we checked online uh, and through Amazon, you can buy a, a box of uh, like 20 of them for $20, but they charge like $150 for shipping. Mm. So there's some price gouging going on. It's very interesting. And even um, hand sanitizers, uh, I just walked into London Drugs and they didn't have any. Wow. Yeah, pretty amazing. Well, it's, you know, it's the basic too. Like if you're sick, stay home. Uh, and and like they've said over and over again on major networks, wash your hands. You know, but the big thing is if you're not feeling well, stay home until you're feeling better, so you're not spreading the virus. Um, yeah, it's a little scary in Europe, absolutely. It is coming this way, but uh, you know, as far as our community here, we are we are prepared to work with Fraser Health and and whatever other body that mm -hmm. is going to be involved with this emergency if it does actually happen in Chilliwack. Um, we want to keep everybody safe. Yeah, right so, on. Um, and so I, I guess I just uh, wanted to, to wrap up by saying um, we're two months now into 2020. Uh, for our residents, what were your top three and council's top three priorities for uh, 2020? And uh, I guess uh, what I want to do is uh, we'll see you in a couple months again is follow okay. up with you and, and okay. see where you're at in terms of uh, those priorities. Well, the top priorities, and, and we have been working on them for quite a while. Uh, you know, obviously, the infrastructure projects have been ongoing, and uh, that is something that's exciting to see. What's going on downtown, uh, to see that re redevelopment and see how that's going to snowball as, as that uh, uh, whole area gets rebuilt and re-energized, if you will. And I suppose the third one for me is is to continue on w with the building of of relationships w with our indigenous folks. We have nine nine bands that touch our borders, and and we have worked very very closely with them. Uh, there are some cool projects that are underway in in partnership with uh, some of the bands, and I want to continue on with that road. Okay, well, so that, so that uh, the the first two are, are infrastructure type projects. There's probably and, four in there. Uh, and yeah, and yeah. then um, and then the uh, indigenous indigenous uh, relations. Yeah. So we're going to spend a lot more time <clears throat> on that particular topic because we didn't really touch on it uh, okay. this time. Sure. So thanks so much for coming nope. in uh, today, thanks Mayor. I really me. appreciate uh, your time. Uh, on our second edition of Councillor's Corner, Good. Chilliwack City. Good. Good. And uh, we'll see you next time. I appreciate the time. Thank you.
Chilliwack Chiefs wrapped up their regular season with a 7-0 win over Langley. They finished second in the mainland division and take on Surrey in the first round of the playoffs. The Chiefs have home ice in this round, game one Friday night at the Chilliwack Coliseum. Chilliwack Giants extending the early bird registration until this Saturday, February 29th. You can sign up your child for football through ChilliwackGiants.com. Curl BC, the mixed doubles provincial championship being held at the Hope Curling Club until March 1st. The winning team advances to represent BC at the 2020 Canadian Mixed Doubles Championship in Portage La Prairie. Season tickets for the Fraser Valley Bandits 2020 season now on sale. While the team didn't make the playoffs in their first year, the general consensus was that the team and the league put a strong product on the court. The Bandits' first home game is May 14th against the league champs, Saskatchewan Rattlers. The opening ceremonies will be held at 11.30 in the morning, March the 30th of Monday, with Mayor Ken Popoff and other dignitaries. And it's reported that Sharon Gates, the former mayor, will sing O Canada. And coming up next, Katie McKay with What's on Chilliwack. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of What's on Chilliwack. I'm your host, Katie McKay, and we have a lot of events to go over as spring is really starting to pick up here in Chilliwack. Don't forget to check out the Fraser Valley Women's Expo on this weekend. On March 1st, the Sunday, I'll be speaking up on stage at 2.45, so please come and watch. I'll also be there each day of the show, handing out magazines to people coming through the door, and I'd love to see you there. So come and say hi. Luna Float has a few events this month on the 4th, 11th, and 25th. There's aromatherapy make and takes, creative malas make and mingle, and a reading and reiki or reflexology night. There's lots of ways for you to come and relax. The Sardis Sports Complex wants to say thank you on March 7th to everyone who uses their complex throughout the year. They're offering a free skate from 5 to 6 p.m. For International Women's Day, Susan Rice is coming to the Chilliwack Cultural Centre. Her humour is down-to-earth and conversational, and it's her ability to bring her everyday experiences to comedic life. Connect Now Business Network has a new day for their business networking lunch and learns. Are you ready to make connections, expand your community, and grow your business? Join us for our monthly networking lunch to meet other professionals. Connect Now is on the first Tuesday of each month for lunch at Pagliotti's Italian Restaurant and are starting an evening coffee meeting at Sarah Bella's Gluten-Free Cafe. There's a Petals and Plates dinner and tour at Quick's Farm Floral Greenhouses on March 14th. Petals and Plates is a series of flower-focused farm dinners that highlight Canadian flower growers and their importance in our agricultural landscape. Local food, beer and wine, local floral designers and chefs all come together to celebrate the diverse bounty of our local community. On March 17th, we have The Lonely coming to the Chilliwack Cultural Centre. They're celebrating the music of Roy Orbison. It's been said that this performance is a seamless recreation with great dynamic range, deep feeling, and a stellar band. There are hundreds of tribute bands out there, but not many compete with the lonely. It's also St. Patrick's Day. Corky's is once again putting on an all-day party fueled by beer and shenanigans. Get your green on because there's treasures and adventures at Corky's Irish Pub. They've also advised to make sure you book off the next day to recover from your Irish flu. What better way to bring in an official start to spring than Sean Fauquahar's Cabaret of Wonders at 7.30 at the Chilliwack Cultural Centre on March 20th. Get ready for a night of mystifying wonder and delight as the two-time world champion magician hosts his 19th Cabaret of Wonders. Witness incredible displays of magic in a spectacular show that will surely blow your mind. There are such incredible events coming to Chilliwack and I hope you'll be able to go to some of them. Chilliwack is an expanding community with more to do than I think many of us realize. If you have an event coming up and want to make sure you're mentioned here, please let me know and we'll get you in. As always, I'm excited to share this series with you to show you all of the amazing things that are coming to Chilliwack for the coming month. This has been Katie with What's On Chilliwack. We'll see you again next month.
Chill TV weather. March will come in with a feeling of spring. A mix of sun and showers for the next few days and the highs around 12. And a reminder that clocks spring forward to daylight saving time next week, March the 8th. We'd like to thank our very special guest this week, Mayor Ken Popoff, in his Counselor's Corner Chilliwack City interview with Barris Carden. Also want to thank Katie McKay for getting us up to speed on what's going on around Chilliwack with her What's on Chilliwack segment. And finally, Jenny, a big thank you to you. Thank you. Now, uh, tell us a little bit more about the Shape Your World Society. Right. So Shape Your World Society is a nonprofit organization that runs the Total Makeover Challenge. And the Total Makeover Challenge is a four-month self-improvement um, program for women um, that we run out of Chilliwack, uh, Abbotsford, and Langley. And um, the self-improvement program is all about helping women on their inner and outer. So there's fitness and health and weight loss and self-improvement uh, seminars for them. And so this weekend is our big event, The Amazing Race. It's the big event to celebrate the end of the level two part of the challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's also happening in, in Chilliwack, Abbotsford and Langley. But for Chilliwack, we are at the uh, Fraser Valley Women's Expo where we're gonna run the event out. And you go and you know, race around the city, but of course no one's gonna be you know, speeding, and visiting the local businesses. So you get to meet some great um, local Chilliwack businesses and you meet their staff, you have your picture taken, you answer a skill testing question, and there's lots of prizes with a grand prize of $500. So if anyone is looking for something to do this Saturday that's fun with the family, it's a great event to go to. So they, you can check it out at info at shapeyourworldsociety.com or if you just want to look at some information on our program, it's the website totalmakeoverchallenge.com. Great. Thanks, Jenny. And thank you for joining us. If you'd like to share the spotlight, even if you've never been on camera before, send us a note at news at chilltv.ca with your CV. And if you have it, links to your video. And if there's something in Chilliwack in the Eastern Fraser Valley you feel we should be reporting on, again, send us an email to the same address, news at chilltv.ca. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.